Running Python and Django on your local computer can be difficult for a number of reasons. One, it's just hard to begin with, to set up everything. Uh, second, um, in the worst of cases, you might have a computer that's not compatible with installing Python and Django and possibly other things that make development easier, like Docker. And so one of the things that we have available today is to use cloud development environments where all of that stuff is pre-installed. So basically, if you can log into something like an AWS account, all that stuff is pre-set up for you, and you can pay as little as pennies a day for the ability to do development up there. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna demonstrate using an AWS account that's part of AWS Academy. It's called a sandbox account. But um, if you are not a current student at a university and you don't have access to that, then just sign up for your own AWS account and uh, once I get past the first couple of minutes, everything after that will be exactly the same, regardless of how you're accessing an AWS account. So, um, if you are an AWS Academy user, then you will get an email that looks like this, and it will, it will send an email to your email address. You click Get Started. You'll come to this website. You click Student Login. You may have to enter in uh, username and password, set up stuff for the first time, or if you're going back for the second time, you will log in. And then once you log in to uh, AWS Academy's Canvas course, you will see a tile that you will click on that gets you into their course. The course looks like this for their Learner Labs. Uh, you click on Modules. Under Modules, there's a link that says Learner Lab. You go to Learner Lab. It looks like this. You click the Start button, and that starts an AWS account in the lab for you. And the little icon over here goes from red to green, and then you're good to go. So let's demonstrate um, what that looks like. So me, I have logged in, and I've been using my account for several days. It has $100 of credit, and yet I've only used $1.40 worth of it. So let me click on this link right here. And I've used Cloud9 before. If you haven't used Cloud9 before, then you would search for it in the search menu, select Cloud9, and here's where we get started. Let me move my notes to the other page here so I can work in two screens at once. Okay, so Regardless of whether you logged in using an AWS Academy account or your own AWS account, you, you would have gotten to this, which is called the AWS console, where you can get to Cloud9. And now, in a mere 19, or 17 steps, uh, you can set up Python, Django, Docker, and have Django projects stored in the cloud uh, really cheaply and, and also have the websites accessible, at least during development. Uh, to show off to your friends. So, start off on step one, create the environment. Come over here and we'll call this my first Django website, something like that. We'll accept most of the defaults. Notice that so you don't get billed on your accounts or use up your free credits. Um, it automatically turns off Cloud9. This is in essence an a computer just like your laptop running in the cloud and they pause it for you so you don't get billed after you haven't been using it for 30 minutes so you can just close the tab anytime you want and it'll turn itself off and you won't get billed um, for whatever reason uh, when I'm using this particular account it likes me to use uh, this option so I'll just go with that I click create and it should take um, I don't know like it says several minutes so I will try to wait here patiently rather than having to start and stop the video. Um, so this creation of your environment, you only have to do it one time. Um, thereafter, every time you come to uh, uh, your AWS account, you can go to environments and your Cloud9 instance will be listed here. And you just click on this open link as soon as this thing is ready. So again, Rather than pausing the video, we'll just sit here in awkward silence for a few moments. Well, while we're waiting, I might as well talk through what it is that we're about to do. 
Um, once it comes open, it's going to have an integrated development environment similar to VS Code. So you can just type stuff in there and, hey, look, it's ready. And you can do Python immediately. Um, and so right after that, we're going to open up the terminal at the bottom of it. Now, this is going to be a combination computer slash Linux computer with the terminal available. Let's, let's see what this looks like. We click open. And there we are. So this is your file system over here. And notice that down at the bottom, I apologize that it's a little small, but here's a terminal window. So this is in essence a Linux computer, but it has a visual interface for doing development set on top of it. I could immediately start creating Python files right here or just do Python from the terminal and it would work. Everything's pre-configured with relatively recent stuff. Um, nevertheless, I'm not going to use that. I'm going to plan on using Docker and the latest stuff for that. So let me go ahead and get ready to do a, to do a project. So I'll come over here and with this highlighted, I'll say new folder and I'm planning on making Django websites. So I'll have a folder that contains all of those and then I'll come down here into the terminal and I'll say CD websites and now I'm going to type I'm gonna start using docker docker is already pre-installed in here how nice is that just like Python okay so I'm gonna actually do all my um, Python within an even newer Python environment than when it comes with cloud 9 I'm gonna use uh, the latest um, Docker container for Python so that I'm always using the very latest Python. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to type Docker network create donut net. Now you don't have to do this unless you're doing what I'm planning to do later on which is to have both Python running and Postgres running. Uh, this allows the two uh, different containers, the two different programs to talk to each other later on. If you're not planning on doing Postgres later, then you don't need to do that particular step. Um, all right, and let's go ahead now and run the next command. I'm just gonna copy and paste to make it a little bit faster. So I'll have a little document that I share with you, but this basically says download the latest Python and map the um, volume or the hard drive in that container to this folder right here which is always going to be in your development environment and if you're not using the donut network for networking the back end you could get rid of that part all right so I go ahead and I hit return and it is downloading the latest version of Python to this computer to run in a container taking a little longer than I would prefer but if you're following along the video you'll be waiting as well okay and my command prompt has changed so it says that I'm now logged into the the light Linux computer that is my container all right so I'm running in a Linux computer that has the latest version of Python running in it so let's go ahead and set up Django now so pip install virtual ENB. Let's go ahead and set up that folder for the packages. So Python run that module and put its folder with that name right there. So I run that command and it will appear over here or at least it has the potential to. Um, it didn't uh, there's a little icon here that says show hidden files hmm, okay well let's refresh file tree there we go um, so now uh, within this websites folder we have this little virtual environment folder so all is well all right so now let's go ahead and type um, we're going to use our virtual environment our package manager uh, in the virtual environment vnb bin activate 
And so you see now um, any of the libraries we install using pip are going to be installed in a little hidden folder here in our project, uh, rather than installing them into the global space for, for Python in this computer. So every single project now can have their, by using this, they can have their own set of libraries that are separate from everybody else's. All right, um, so we're running. So now we type in pip install Django. Takes a moment. Now we'll type Django admin start project, and we'll call this our donut website. Awesome. Now we'll change directory into donut website. Notice that there's a folder up here that says donut website. And um, within this particular folder, there is the manage.py program, which we're going to be using. So I'm going to type um, Python manage.py migrate. Then I'll type python manage.py create super user. Put in whatever you want there. Oh, I mistyped. Oh well. Good enough. Um, all right. Now because of the permissions on here, I'm going to do something um, slightly hackish here. Um, chmod. I'm going to make it so I can. I, I want to make it so that I can edit the files that are in here. And, and right now, I, I'm not because of how the permission settings are in this environment, but this will fix it. There we go. Now they'll be writable. Now I'm going to go over here to settings.py in websites, donut website, donut website, open that up. Um, by default, I can only allow Django to be visited by things that we specify as allowed. And I'm going to say, let's let everybody visit this website. So I'll go ahead and hit save. And then I will type Python manage.py run server 0.0.0.0 .0 and then 8080 so I'll be able to visit a website on port 8080 and then you see a little link pops up right here your code is running here bam okay so that was starting from complete scratch empty account um, entered in about 17 commands and now I'm running Django um, if I were to start adding folders and modifying uh, the files that are in there, this thing's going to automatically reload and I'm off to the races doing my application. Now, what happens then when you come back later on? So let's just say we, we close this and we close this and we let it time out. Let's just say that uh, we if, if you're in a, a lab account, you would click end lab. Um, but let's just say you close everything, you're gone, you come back another day, and then you log back into your AWS account. You'll see a link there for things you've been at recently. You click open, you open it up. And everything's still sitting there uh, as you had it before. Um, one of the things you could have done is you could have said uh, Control C, and if you really wanted to shut things down, you could type deactivate and then exit. Oops. Okay, so now we're just back to the command line. So let's just say I did that when I logged out the first day, and I closed everything. I open up my IDE. On another day and it looks like this so let's just say I want to start back up with my project again as it is right now Docker's shut down I'm not using you know my websites not running so how would I get back to things 
Well, it's really simple at this point. Um, I would uh, make sure I'm in the websites folder. So by default, um, you're right there. So type, you would change directory into there. So now you're in this folder. Um, so just make sure you get back to your websites folder. So if I go back to my websites folder and I type the command that I did the other day, I don't have to install a bunch of stuff this time. So I type this, I type this command for starting up my Docker container again while using the files that are right here. Then I'm going to start my virtual environment dot bmv and activate. You see the little icon right there. And let me go into my donuts folder, my donut website folder. That's where the program is that allows me to start the website. So I do python manit.py run server 0, .0, .0, 0.0.0.0 port 8080. So I run it again. And so now I'm back up. I should be able to click this link. There we go. So uh, using this process, I can shut down all the stuff that I have here, close all my windows, come back another day, just reopen it, run a couple commands, and Django's up and running again. And I can continue my development process while all of my files are retained up here in the cloud. Um, this is fantastic in a lot of ways. Your computer could burn down and everything's safe. You can go on vacation, borrow somebody else's computer. Since this is all browser-based, you can log in and do your work here. This is amazing. So I hope you appreciate this. Good luck.